This video is on lung infections or pneumonia. Pneumonia. And pneumonia is an infection of your lung parenchyma. Parenchyma means functional tissue. What's the functional unit tissue of your lungs? It'd be your respiratory zone. That's your respiratory bronchioles with your alveolar sac and your alveoli, right? Your respiratory zone. So it's affecting your respiratory zone. And you can break it up into different types of pneumonia. If it affects, if it affects a lobe of your lung, we call that lobar pneumonia, lobar. If it only affects the bronchi and the bronchioles, we call that bronchopneumonia, bronchopneumonia. And sometimes, sometimes you affect the space outside your alveolar sac, your interstitial space, interstitial space. We call this interstitial pneumonia, interstitial. And they all look different. If you take a lung and you cut it in half, biopsy it, you can actually see low bar pneumonia affecting a lobe. This affects this lobe, all right? If you take that same lung and you biopsy it, you actually be able to see bronchopneumonia affecting the bronchioles. Yeah, you know um, bronchioles will branch out in the lungs and you'll see these little cavities, these little spaces where they do, and sure enough, they'll be pus and inflammation around these bronchioles. Looks like Swiss cheese. And then interstitial pneumonia is kind of more diffuse. Yeah, it's affecting the outside your, your alveolar sac. It's a little bit more diffuse, so I can't really draw it, but chest x-ray will show kind of a more diffuse pattern. And you're thinking, oh, I'm working with interstitial pneumonia here. If it shows, a, if your chest x-ray shows just like this one lobe that's completely white as low bar pneumonia, right? Dead giveaway. Now your, now your low bar, your bronchopneumonia, actually affect inside your actual respiratory zone and instead of outside like interstitial actually it affects inside yeah, and that's typical we call that typical pneumonia and because it's typical it shows all the signs we usually associate with pneumonia yeah you get really sick really fast you have a fever you have a productive cough coughing up green stuff all the time you're having chest pain all these signs we call we, we think it's typical so we call this typical pneumonia typical pneumonia and the most common bug most common bug it's gonna be your strep pneumo now the interstitial pneumonia we said affects we said affects outside your alveolar sac not actually inside your alveolar sac it doesn't actually affect inside your alveolar sac and because it doesn't affect your inside your alveolar sac you have a little bit milder symptoms yeah you can get away with a little bit more so it'll be a little bit milder so you feel a little bit sick, feel a little bit feverish, have a cough, but, but it's milder, all right? This is not our typical presentation, not our typical thing we think about when we think about pneumonia, so we call this atypical, atypical. And it's atypical, it's a little bit milder because it affects outside of your, of your alveolar sac. It affects your interstitial. It's also atypical because the microorganisms are different. Instead of strep pneumo, we have mycoplasma pneumo. Okay, you also have things like viruses coming in, RSV, you also have things like chlamydia, and maybe these organisms just like to affect the outside more and cause this milder interstitial form. So you gotta know, it's atypical, and not only are the symptoms atypical, but the bugs are atypical. Now before I move on, I just want to talk about lobar pneumonia, because I think lobar pneumonia is kind of cool. You can actually, like I said, see one one lobe of the lung really get affected and really start to change and deal with this inflammation it's kind of cool yeah you can you can see it go from like red and inflamed to kind of white into healing back into normal tissue it goes through all these different stages and there are about four of them the first stage is congestion and the name goes it away you have all that inflammation you're going to have all this edema edema second stage is red Hepatization. You're gonna have neutrophils come in, you're gonna have red blood cells that kind of get out, ex extravate into your into your space. So it turns red. Right, red blood cells. That's the red part. What is the hepatization part? Um, hepatization means like your liver. Instead of the nice spongy tissue that we associate with our lungs, now it's becoming firm from all that edema, firm from all that exudate, and it's becoming hard like your liver. That's the hepatization part. Okay. But eventually that those red blood cells will clear and you'll be able to remove all that gunk, right? So it'll turn from red to gray. We call that gray 
hepatization. Still kind of hard. <laughs> That's why it's still called hepatization. But finally, you'll resolve. Um, your tissues will resolve. Things will get back to normal. We call that resolution. And if there's damage, then your lung, your stem cells of your lungs will try to replenish the, the tissue. What's the stem cells of your lungs? If you said type 2 pneumocyte, you're absolutely right. Type 2 pneumocyte. Type 2 pneumocyte. Okay. That is pneumonia. Those are your, your three types. Gave you the bugs. Um, something you should know, the bugs differ. The bugs differ depending on special circumstances. You should know the most common bugs, which we just talked about, strep pneumo and mycoplasma. But in certain different situations, the, the bugs could be <laughs> could be different. So in the hospital, in the hospital, you, you're going to see more hospital bugs, more nasty bugs, like E. coli, like Cleb, it's yellow. Cleb is a big one. If you're on a respirator or a ventilator, you can see things like Pseudomonas because they just love water. Pseudomonas, and I'll write ventilator. You're going to see a lot of people with COPD in the hospital. And COPD is associated with a bug called Morxella. Okay. If you're not messing with old COPD patients, if you're messing with little babies like neonates, they have a whole host of other bugs like group B strep, like E. coli, and also like chlamydia, which they can get during the vaginal delivery. If you see really sick patients, immunocompromised, or someone that's been in certain circumstances like going cave diving, then you might see fungal infections. Fungal. Those are your histo, your crypto, your plasma, your blasto. Okay. I'm not going to go through all these bugs. Um, that's what my microbial videos are for. Or if you like Sketchy Micro, you can watch Sketchy Micro. What I do want you to do, what I do want you to do um, is to Pause the video and then tell me a few things about each bug. Uh, I can't force you to do this, but if you want a really good score, then you have to be able to do that. Yeah, you should be able to come up with these facts right away when you're thinking of these bugs. Okay? If you haven't done micro yet, then just uh, flag this video and then come back when you have. If you're able to at least list off a few facts for each bug, then I think you're in very, very good shape. So these are your bugs of pneumonia. Let's talk about another lung infection. Let's talk about TB, tuberculosis. Now, tuberculosis, uh, you get that initial infection, it usually affects your lower lobes. Lower lobes. And you get this focal, focal area of caseous, caseous necrosis. So TB causes caseous necrosis. So you use this focal area of caseous necrosis, and that can undergo fibrosis and calcify. Great picture will be my nose. Looks like literally a little calcium nugget. We call this a gone focus. A gone focus. Now TB is is carried out from your macrophage. It spreads via your macrophage, so it can spread to your lymph nodes. Lymph nodes. Nodes. And if you have your gone focus and your lymph nodes being affected, we call that your gone complex. Complex. So you need both of these. You can't have a complex with just one thing, right? So you have two of these. Your gone focus and your lymph nodes being affected. What lymph nodes? Your hilar lymph nodes. Hilar. Those are your lymph nodes by your lungs. We talked about the sarcoidosis and um, silicosis. So your hilar lymph nodes. If your body fights it, um, it will suppress it, and then you'll have latent TB. Sometimes that latent TB can reactivate. reactivate. And secondary TB reactivates in what part of your lungs? We went over this. If you said upper lungs, upper lobes, you're absolutely right. Why? Oh, why? Because it is an aerobe. It needs air. And your upper lobes, we said, had the most ventilation, had the most air. So it can reactivate in your upper lobes. It sometimes can spread. Sometimes it can spread because your lungs are very, very vascular, right? So sometimes it can spread, it can spread all over your lungs. We call that miliary. I've seen questions where they talk about TB and then they'll show x ray at the lungs. And it is everywhere. It is everywhere. Just complete white out. That's miliary. It can spread to your brain. It can spread to your meninges, it's called meningitis. It can spread to your back. We call that POTS disease. Back, POTS. 
that's also a big one. So you'll see an abscess of, so you'll see an abscess on someone's back and then they'll have a history of TB. But, okay. Speaking of abscesses, our last topic is gonna be on abscesses. Abscesses, abscesses can occur when you aspirate, breathe in oral pharyngeal content. Content. And that oral pharyngeal content can have a lot of nasty stuff. This is seen a lot in alcoholics when they pass out or they drink too much or they throw up and then you kind of aspirate it. It's also seen in things like epileptics. So there's a, there's a running theme here where they're not able to control their aspiration or they're passed out or they're debilitated. Hospitalized patients also have this, okay? And when you aspirate it, it can go in and there's a ton of nasty bacteria that can cause an abscess. And you'll be able to see that abscess on chest x-ray. You'll actually see a low fluid sac on chest x-ray. Okay. And you'll see a lot of anaerobes because that's what's in your secretions. Like bacteroides, like fusobacterium, like peptostrep. So a lot of anaerobes. They like that. Now a little uh, throwback to one of our, I think it might be our first video. Um, what? Which lung would an abscess affect, your right or your left lung? Will be your right lung, all right? Whenever you aspirate something, it doesn't matter if it's a peanut, doesn't matter if it's fluid, go down your trachea. And we said that your right lung was more vertical. Your left lung was more 90 degrees. So we'll just go straight to your right lung. Now what lobe of your right lung? What lobe of your right lung? Usually your lower lobe. I shouldn't have drawn it this high. This kind of looks off. Usually, usually your right lower lobe. When we talked about aspiration when we talked about aspirating things like peanuts and foreign objects, but don't forget aspiration of things like water. It's no different. Okay? It's no different. That actually does it for infection. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.